Okay. Yeah. Yes. Great. Um, well, we uh, we are interested to to maybe ask you some questions about your Olympic journey and kind of your experiences. So um, we have some of our students who have uh, volunteered to ask some questions. So if you're okay, we'll just kind of fire away. Absolutely. Let's go for it, guys. No problems at all. Go ahead. You, you want to come front and say yeah. that? Can you see me over here? I can't see myself. No. Where I can't see you. Where are you? I see. Hey, I see you now. Hi, hi. And what's your name? Uh, I'm Nico. Okay, Nico. Nice to meet you. Yes. What's your question? Um, how did? You, what was your diet like when you were running for the Olympics, and how did it change? Wow. After. Wow. After yeah, the that's a loaded question. That's a really good question. And wow, nutrition, 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 high performance for athletes, right? So in the beginning, it was a little bit tough because let's say when I was in college in the US, mm, our diet was what the cafeteria gave us, right? We didn't really have lots of options. But now when we went to the highest level, the training center I lived in was actually in Spain. So we went to a we went to, we were out, for the 92 Olympic Games, I actually was recruited by the IOC, which is the international body of the Olympic Games. And I won a scholarship to go and live in Barcelona to train for the 92 Olympic Games. So our diet was, wow, oof, it was rigid. Let's just say I couldn't eat as many donuts as I can right now. Let's just say I was restricted, right? So it was pretty intense, the cal you know, with calories, but we had dietitian and nutritionists focusing on all this. So it was just part of the high performance. So it was really intense. I haven't strayed that much away from that as I've gotten older. I mean, I'm not a strict, but I'm a disciplined athlete and a person. So I think when you, when you build good habits in the beginning and you stick with it, it kind of helps in the long run. So it was tough. It was really intense, but I think really, that really helped a lot with my performance as I was running for the Olympics. I hope that helps with your question. No, it goes like, like, what did you eat? Like, is that Francesca? Oh my God, is that Francesca? <laughs> yes, that's me. Francesca, what? oh my gosh, I didn't know that was you. Oh my God. Oh, sorry. Okay, Gozi, behave. Hey, honey, how are you? It's great to see you, but were you eating eggs, potatoes, fruit? Like, what were you eating? Were you doing, like, shakes and power protein and stuff like that? You know that? what? We didn't have, I didn't, we didn't do that many shakes when we were there. It was, it's really weird. We got our nutrition from our food, a lot of eggs, of course, the protein, chicken, fish. I don't, I personally don't like red meat, so I don't do red meat, but lots of chicken, eggs. I mean, even back then, we had tofu, salads. Gosh. Anything high protein you can think of, of course, not forgetting our healthy fats and, you know, just it was a balanced diet, but we just, I say that we just were not allowed to eat, you know, fatty foods or drink fizzy drinks, and we just weren't allowed to do that. So anything healthy you can think of, compound that by maybe two or three, because our calorie intake was pretty high. It was between three and sometimes 3,500 to 4,000 calories a day because we were, we were using so much energy training and practicing two, sometimes three times a week. So you can only imagine what we're doing and how much we're eating. It was a lot of food. I can't eat that much right now. So yeah, um, I think it was good. It happened back then. Brilliant. Okay, great. Um, perfect. Well, Cam, you want to, uh, well, she would love to, she would love to meet you. Yes. Sure. Okay. Hi. Hi. Is it, is, is, did you say your name is Kim? Camry, yeah. Um, so Hi, my, how are you? Yes. <laughs> I'm good. Um, my question is, was there a time in your career that you wanted to quit? And if so, like what kept you going? Wow. I wanted to quit quite a few times. When coach would yell at me, when coach told me I had two, 2200s to do, and when I was done, I still had two more. Yes, the many times I wanted to quit, but you know what kept me going? What kept me going was the fact that I was selected or I qualified to represent my country of Zambia because I was the first woman to compete at the Olympic Games in 92 for Zambia. Okay, 
So that was a lot of pressure, but it was also very humbling. So what kept me going was the drive that I have as a person and the fact that I had worked so hard and my country had trusted that I could perform to the best of my ability. And also just for my family support, my coaches in the US, my friends, my community, it just became a, a family affair type thing. So, you know, just staying focused and, and just having that vision and knowing that very few people get this opportunity in their lifetime to do one, let alone two Olympic games. You know, it doesn't happen very often. So just the motivation and just the, you know, the hard work just kept me going. So my coaches and my family and my country just really motivated me. I love that. I love that. Great question. And yeah, yes. Yeah. All right, Nicole, do you wanna? Should we do as we go there? Yes. <laughs> Nicole, come on, girl, you can do this. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> My question is, how do you maintain your mental focus at practice every day? Oh my goodness. Yeesh. Yeah, Nicole, that's loaded. <laughs> My goodness. Wow. That is loaded. You know, we never, wow, that mental focus. I mean, I mean Nicole, I can't, that's a very good question. I don't know. Sometimes, I think sometimes you either have it or you don't. And you have coaches who support you. You have your community. Again, I'm going to go back to that to support you. But there'll be days, many days where I would go to the track and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I just don't want to be here right? I'm just like, wow. And you see the workout and coach says, today we're going to be on the track for 10 minutes or let's say 15 minutes. You knew it was going to be a, a torture workout, right? So now you have to mentally prepare yourself and you just have to dig deep. I mean, that's just, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's that simple, but it's yet so difficult. Again, the pressure for me of knowing my country was depending on me. I was still in, in college when, my, when I went to the 92 games. I was still in the US and my, so my teachers and my teammates and my classmates, my whole community in, in Illinois was going to school were going to watch me, Olympic games and the opening ceremony and oh my gosh, it was quite stressful. But at the end of the day, I went back to the question, how many people get such an incredible opportunity to be at the highest sporting event on earth. How many people? How many? I mean, there's a handful of us, right? And you take that with humility. You don't let it get to your head. You don't get a big head. You don't say, oh my gosh, I'm all that, blah, blah. No, because if you have those attitudes during e events like that, that kind of stuff is gonna follow you through your life. So the humility is absolutely critical. The being grateful to be, to be able to do what you're doing. For me, that's kind of what kept me going and that's what keeps me going right now. So I've got kind of a follow-up question about that, Ngozi. So like when, when I'm out running and obviously I'm just like a have fun athlete, I have like a mantra sometimes in my head, like, all right, one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. Do you, like what yeah. kind of self-talk do you do? Did you do then and even now when you're lifting at five in the morning or pulling tires or whatever <laughs> What kind of like self-talk do you do? You know what? I, it, honestly, if we fast forward to where I am today, I am just passionate about what I do. I just love what I do. So for me, right now in my life, Francesca, you know kind of the lifestyle I have been at the gym, getting about four in the morning. I think Mark and I one day were messaging. I was like, Mark, it's four in the morning. Mark is like, yeah, it's just whatever PM. I'm just like, wow, really? <laughs> He's had his all day and I'm just starting my day. So I start my day early to kind of get me going. And my, my day is loaded. But I think that's what happens when you do what you love to do. It's not a job, eh? It's not a job. It's a passion. It's, it's what you love. It's hectic. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of personality a lot of people in your space a lot of talking and i love to talk but there'll be days when believe it or not francesca you find it hard to believe i just want to put my headphones on and zone out i just don't want to talk i just like tomorrow morning our time i'm going to go for a run 
So for me, it's just my time to release energy and negative thoughts and just leave it out on the road and not take it and, in, and, and give it to anybody else. Whoever's got, we have so much dealing with, we're dealing with right now as the human race. We don't need any more drama. So I want to be as, dr as less dramatic as I can. And running and working out really helps me do that. It really does. And I love that. Yeah. Great, great answer. Right. Max, you want to come on up? Yeah. Where's Max? Is Max hiding? Max, come on. Do, give me five push-ups, Max. Let's go. Max, can you do push-ups? Give me five push-ups, Max, before I answer your question. Five push-ups. Come on, Max. Come on. You got to give me five. Let's go. Five push-ups. One. One, two, three. Oh, sweet. Yay. Awesome. All right. Next person is going to do burpees. Okay, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my, my question is kind of like a two-part question, but it was, uh, what are the biggest differences between training as an Olympic athlete and training as a non-Olympic athlete? And what would your mm. recommendations be for balancing fitness and other responsibilities in your life? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I think for me, the Olympic part, being an Olympic athlete, like I'd mentioned earlier, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure on you. Um, you have your country on you, you have your teammates on you, you have your community on you, and you're expected to perform. And really, if you don't, there is a sense of disappointment. Now, did I make it to the finals? No. Did I improve my time? Yes. Did I run personal best? Yes. For me, that was better than I thought I would do, but mm, for the nation, not so much, right? Not so much because there's only three medals at the Olympic games, gold, silver, and bronze at the end of the day. And if you don't get either one of them, yeah, great. You participated. It's all good. But at the end of the day, nations want medals. Like in high school, in college, when we go to these meets or we score points, right? It's all about points because at the end of the meet or whatever, we want to say whatever school has won the meet or whatever, and it's it's prestigious. That's kind of the same way with the Olympic Games. But as a non-Olympian right now, the discipline that I had to endure at the two Olympic Games has followed me into this next lifestyle. I, I really honestly think now I'm actually more fit now to a certain extent than I was back in 92 and 96 because fitness has changed, right? Fitness has changed. It's all about functional training. It's CrossFit. It's boot camp. It's all these different mixes. And I didn't have that when I was training for the Olympics. We did old school training, which was good. But now I'm CrossFitting, I'm boot camping. So that mix of functional training has, has made me a better athlete. Can I compete like I did before? No, but I feel better. I feel stronger right now than I did back then. And it's just balancing. I'll go back to passion. Do what you love. I mix it up. I run, I boot camp, I crossfit, I mix it up. I swim. It's all about just having a variety of, of, of fitness um, abilities. And to be able to do that is, is such an awesome thing. And it's really, you know, it's humbling and it's really fantastic. I love it personally. Oh, yeah. I hope that answered your question, though. Yeah. Okay. I hope that helped. Yes. Thank you. Okay. We got okay. one more yeah. question, then maybe we can open it up, it goes a little bit. Little bit. So Dan's no gonna... problem. Yes. Yeah. And who is that? Is that? Did I hear Jen? Yeah. Hi, Jen. Hi. Perfect time. Hi. Hi. So my question is, how did you balance being an athlete and a mom at the same time? Now, that's a good question. So what I will say is this. When I did the 92 and 96 games, I wasn't a mom. Ooh, yeah, no, I wasn't. But I know quite a few women who were. So I had Busi with my daughter who's at Drake in 2001. And my last Olympic Games was in 1996. But that doesn't take away from the fact that I was a mom when I was in the U.S. running a business trying to manage my life, trying to run my family. And Jen, to find that balance is really tough. Um, the lifestyle here in Zambia, Francesca can tell you, is very different from the US, extremely different, especially if you're a parent. 
you get help, you get extra help, you have people to help you with the kids and stuff, which I know is very difficult in the US. And I've lived both lives. I had no help in the US. I had help here with my kids a little bit younger. Now they're old, of course, and not here. But I've known women who've gone to have kids and come back and play for the Olympic Games and done a really amazing work. Alison, um, uh, uh, oh, what's her name? Uh, what's the 20 meter? Thank you, yes. She had a baby and came back strong. And there are a lot of other women who've done that. It, it didn't happen to me, but it, having kids after my Olympic life, I think was a lot easier than trying to balance it while you're being an athlete. But it can be done, it's been done and it continues to be done right now. So it's, it takes a lot, but it can be done. I think it's just determination and focus and all those things that we know we all need to do as people to succeed as best we can. So I hope that helps answer your question. Yes, thank you. I love okay, it. perfect. You're welcome. Love it. Okay. Um, anyone else like to um, ask any follow up? I mean, Jose, I said, this is what I said. I said this is um, like the first time I've ever gotten to speak with a with an Olympian. And by the way, when we say former Olympian, like, I mean, <laughs> do you feel like once you're an Olympian, you're always an Olympian? I mean, that's how I would I would take it. It's like. You will forever yeah. be an Olympian, which is which is amazing. Yeah, it's quite super. It's fun, you know. It's humbling. It's awesome. And I think you've not, like you said, once you're an NBA player, always you're an NBA player. Once you're, you know, you are this and this. Those labels stay with you. But again, they're labels, right? And it's how you carry that, isn't it? Yeah. Because I could be, you know, I have a lot of Olympic friends, and um. Sorry, guys. I have a lot of Olympic friends and everyone has gone in different directions. We're all retired. Many of us are now late 40s, early 50s. And many of us are doing what we love to do. Other people are still trying to find their way, right? So sport is critical. Sports is, in my life, it set the pace for who I am today because of the focus because of the discipline, because of the, the friendship, because of the teamwork you had to do, because of the selflessness. You can't think about yourself if you're going to run on a four by one relay. It's just not you. There's three other people you have to think about. It's coordination. If I hand over the button to Jen and she drops it, what happens? What happens? It's over. We're DQ'd, right? Yeah. We could be in first place, but if someone, if, if someone drops the button, that's it. So if you don't work as a team, if you're not cohesive and you can apply that to anything in life, you're not going to make it. If you're standing in front of your teacher and you're being disrespectful to your parents and not showing respect, you're not going to get very far. It's just, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Unfortunately, it's like that for many, but mm, no. And Francesca, I tell you, she knows my kids. Yeah, no, we don't go down that route. Because when you raise kids, you're raising ambassadors for the world. Because now that I'm sitting here talking to you guys, my kids are in the same environment you all are in. I'm not worried about them. You know why? Because we instilled the right values and morals in them. So they can go overseas. And I know they're not up to no good. They're doing what they're supposed to do because of that foundation. And that's what sport does. It sets, it sets the pace for discipline and focus. So if you're in a sport, guys, Stick with it, be disciplined, be focused, because it's not just about now, it's about when you're 50, hint, hint. So I actually have a follow-up question kind of connected to that. It's me again, Ngozi, hello. Hi, so friends, hi, babe. I remember you telling me about, um, like, so you're a coach for lots of athletes um, at GoGo -Go Fitness, but then also, <laughs> like, you, you told me that you also work with a trainer, and I'm not sure where your trainer is. So I'm wondering... Yes how you are setting goals for yourself now like what are you personally working on in your fitness journey and how have you decided what your next goal should be and are you going to run the explosions yes are you going to run a half am i going to <laughs> no you know the answer to that question you know the answer to that question no, no. thank you <laughs> I'll stick to my three miles. Thank you very much. You know what? I have a coach because I have a coach in CrossFit. Because in boot camp, I'm the coach. So I, I'm kind of guiding. But in CrossFit, I actually have a coach. One of the coaches trains, trains me. And 
I don't know how much you guys have a CrossFit, but there's this CrossFit open and we all competed around each other, blah, blah, blah. So it starts this weekend. So I've been working really hard to do my third CrossFit open. So for me, at my point in my life, that's kind of my thing right now. It's like I'm training for the CrossFit Open. It's three weeks. I'm excited. I want to be ranked in Zambia. I was the last few years. So at this, at my point in my life, it's still fun to have like a competitive edge, so to speak. And it's nice to set those goals like this. Today's workout. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. We won't talk about that. But whoo, I tell you what. I felt 50 today. I'm telling you. But I just had to mentally focus and just carry on and just keep going so my goals are just to keep fit and healthy and you know to live another i don't know 20 30 40 years and just feel as good as i do today and nutrition taking care of your body your mind your body and your soul and being kind to people and the humanity i think to me it's that simple and that's the way i try and live my life that's pretty much it I love it. Yeah. Um, I do. I want to, we have a few people joining us on Zoom. Um, so, yes. so anybody who's, who's on virtually with us, uh, Caden, Carol, Ella, Fair, Nick, Zadie, do you guys have any questions for Ngozi? <laughs> I was like, no. That's no. okay. That's <laughs> okay. No problem. No problem at all. That means all the questions. Oh, sorry. Okay. So Fair, Fair, do you have a question? No. Yeah. Um, so, like, how do you cope, like, after, like, a bad knee? After a bad knee? Bad meat. Oh, bad meat. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Eesh. You have to reflect on what you did wrong and how you can do better. It won't happen the same day. It might happen two or three days later, but you have to reflect and say, did I get out of the blocks fast enough? Did I open up my stride? You have this conversation with yourself. So... I always used to ask myself the question, did I really perform to the best of my abilities? Could I have done something differently in practice? And most of the time, the answer is yes, I could have done better. And you just reflect and try and do better the next time. But you don't beat yourself up. You reflect and you move on, you do better the next time. That's how I used to manage myself. So, so thank you for the question. Yeah, that's a great question. So Farah herself is a sprinter. She's traveling to Virginia this weekend. Oh, to wow. Yeah. To run. She's what, what, what does she run? Is she one and two? Like a 120 meter sprinter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Well, I wish her all the best. I hope she does really well and just does her best. That's all we can do at this point. Exactly. Okay. Well, out of respect for your time, Ngozi, I think we're um, getting close to the to the Zoom limited time here. Um, but are no there problem. Any, yeah. Are there any little final? Okay. Great. Well, I'll tell hello, you, Mark. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Ngozi. No, no, no. I just uh, first of all, thank you for having me tonight yeah. or tonight, your morning and my evening. So thank you for that. I'm so grateful. It's been fun. Um, you know, it's, I haven't done this before. This is really fabulous. I really love it. So I'm just grateful that it takes young people like you to remind me of the stuff that I've done. And I hope you always set high goals for yourselves, whether it's athletically, academically, just be an all rounded person and follow your passion. I think that's the main thing. Do what you love to do because it really goes along when it gives you peace in your heart. I had to come back all the way back to Africa to really solidify my passion. I did it in the US, but I think I was needed more here. And I see the impact as an African woman that I'm making on my community. And it's so nice to see many women taking up sport and being active and being fit. So it transcends in so many different ways, fitness and health and wellness. So fit, you know, being an athlete allowed me to do this. And I wish you guys all the best and just just go for the goal, so to speak, and don't hold back on anything. Don't let anyone tell you can't do anything and just go for it. And thank you so much. Well, we are um, humbled to have you here. What an extraordinary opportunity. So thank you, because we really, really appreciate your time. 
Um, and good yeah, luck yeah. In, the, in the CrossFit Open. That's yeah. that's exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Francesca, thank you for linking me up. Love you, yeah. brother. Welcome to come to Zambia on Safari anytime. Hey, hey. hey. Open right. invitation, road trip to Zambia. <laughs> Francesca can lead the way. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Ngozi. Appreciate Bye, it. Bye, guys. Well Thank you so much. Ciao. All right. Oh, so good. Cool. So good. Okay. Um, so. <clears throat> okay. The, that was sick. That is pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you for everyone joining here. We will unpack this a little bit on Friday for you distance learners. Um, thank you.